Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Yeah, yellow tape around his body. It's an FN homicide. Oh, yeah, YNW Melly. I'm on a drill type of mood. Anyways, what's up with it, fam? It's your boy, Hot Boxing Minute, your favorite pharmaceutical engineer turned boxing analyst. Back at you with that uncut realness, of course, as only I can serve it to you. Had some interesting news and some interesting rumors hit the blog sphere today in the boxing world. Of course, we have a loaded weekend full of fights. We got that fight going on with ESPN, with Jared Anderson and Rudenko. And then, of course, we got Danny Dubois challenging Alexander Usyk. We even got a fun OTX card out there in Atlanta. We got Lorenzo Truck Simpson against Vladimir Hernandez. But we're actually not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the latest news to hit the wire in the boxing world. An announcement was just made today. As far as I know, I just found out about it today. Tim Zhu, the tough Australian chap from down under, is going to be fighting Brian Bala Mendoza. And uh, let me see if I can... There it is. Now, this is kind of a weird fight. I guess it's a interim title unification fight. I guess that's the way to put it. But it is a fun scrap. It's going down October 15th out there in Australia. No Limit Productions. No Limit Productions is the one that puts on those awesome Australian fight cards out there in the land where the marsupials are at. And they have the flamethrowers in the crowds. And I don't really know why American boxing doesn't incorporate flamethrowers like WWE. More flamethrowers. We need that. I love what they do down there with those fights. Tim Zhu is riding an extraordinary wave of confidence right now, as is Brian Bala Mendoza. Tim Zhu is undefeated. He's sitting pretty with a nice record. Um, let me see what his record is. 23-0. and 0. He's got 17 knockouts. He just got done with back-to-back high-level wins. High-level wins. High-publicity wins. Actually, he's coming off like... He's ringing off a string of awesome wins. First, he had that win over Takashi Inoue. Then he fought Terrell Gache. Then he beat up Tony Harrison. And then he knocked out Carlos Ocampo in, what was it, one round? Viciousness. Viciousness. Tim Zhu is a man on a mission. He was slated to fight... Jermel Charlo for the undisputed 154 straps. That fight, for some reason or another, never materialized. First, it was Charlo getting injured or what have you. And then Tim Zhu decided to pick up the Ocampo fight. And then Jermel Charlo decided he's going to go with the Canelo Alvarez super fight undisputed. And now we are left with this fight. Tim Zhu versus Brian Mala Mendoza. And I ain't mad. Brian Bala Mendoza is riding a wave of confidence too. He's a heavy hitter. He's a puncher. He's got a couple losses on his record, but it ain't no biggie. He's coming off of back-to-back high-profile wins against Jason Rosario and Slenderman Sebastian Fundora. And that knockout that he had earlier this April over Sebastian Fundora might be one of the candidates for knockouts of the year. It's vicious. If you get a chance, check it out and give yourself a moment to go Check out the awesomeness of Brian Bala Mendoza. Tim Zhu is slowly becoming a fan favorite out here in the States. He's already got a huge following out there in Australia. It's fun. It's fun. And uh, his brother, incidentally enough, Nikita Zhu, is a fun fighter to watch too, just like he is. And he just recently got a knockout this past weekend in a very fun little scrap against Jack Brubaker down under and Nikita Zhu, by all accounts, he might have more pop than Big Bro Bro does. It, it maybe, maybe it's a little early in his career to make such a statement. It is so much fun. Let me pull up this, this knockout. <laughs> Y'all, it was immaculate the way he did this, dude. It's a, a vicious body shot. And uh, as far as I know, he's got quite a few knockouts now. Uh, out of his seven wins, six of them have been by stoppage, but... Jack Brubaker was no match for him. This was a highlight of a fight. I believe it was earlier today, if not yesterday. It just recently happened. Body shot. You see his face? Look at that man's. Look at that man's face. He was not ready. He clearly wasn't ready. You know what I mean? So it's it's going to be interesting. I, I think this kind of fight. Is, is one that boxing fans should get behind because it's, it's going to be a fun action-packed bruiser fight between two heavy punchers. And you know, this boxing year has been so awesome thus far and it should end in this last quarter of 2023 with some more awesomeness. Tim Zhu versus Brian Bala Mendoza. We also got the news I just broke about 
Zerdo Ramirez against Joe Smith Jr. Boxing fan. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is that why you are here? Is that not why you are here? One more time. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is that why you are here? Are you not here to see the fade? Oh, yes. So, now that I'm done talking about the Tim Zoo Brian Baba Mendoza card, the next issue on the docket, tons of fun. The rumors started to spread online about Shakur Stevenson's next opponent. And it started off when he he did make a comment. Keyshawn Davis made a comment on Twitter. Damn genius. Damn genius, I tell you. Let me let me show you this post. Because he wasn't supposed to spill the beans like that, right? But he ended up doing so. And um, I'm going to add that to the stream. Now, if you look here in those words right there, he says, Big bro got to him first in reference to Shakur Stevenson. He said, I ain't tripping. He's going to do him just as bad as I would. He since deleted that tweet. And this tweet was on the 19th, which was four days ago. And it looks like the cat is out of the bag because a lot of the rumors are really starting to swirl that that was in reference to Frank Martin, Frank the Ghost Martin, up against your boy Shakur Stevenson. And I think that's a fun match. Um, my boy Ringwalk Danny also made a reference to it. And Ringwalk Danny, who is the co-host of TBV, the boxing voice with Nestor Gibbs, he uh, posted a tweet about it. And he really isn't the type to break a lot of news. He does talk about a lot of good insider information. They live in Las Vegas. He's constantly in the gyms. And according to my boy, Ringwalk Danny, let's post up what he tweeted. He said that the word on the street is that Top Rank has a hold on a venue for another hold on a venue. We'll be hosting an event on November 16th or that weekend uh, when F1 Racing is going to be in Las Vegas. And he is hearing that Keyshawn Davis was right in his assumption that it's going to be Frank Martin. Now, don't quote me on that one because it has not been officially announced yet. We really don't know. But, yeah, I think fans are going to be interested in seeing a fight between Keyshawn Davis, not Keyshawn Davis, between Shakur Stevenson and Frank Martin. Both of them undefeated. Shakur Stevenson, of course, has that Olympic pedigree. I think in his professional career, he might have lost maybe four rounds, maybe three, honestly. He's one of the slickest defensive fighters in the game. We all love Shakur Stevenson. He is undefeated. He has not been beaten. He has not even touched the canvas in his professional career. Not once. To this day. To this day. To this day. To this day. To this day, Shakur Stevenson, I don't think has touched the canvas. I can't recall seeing it. I don't think he has. He's hard enough to hit. Frank the Ghost Martin out there under Derek James. He just came out of a lackluster performance against a tough German whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But he has been adamant about getting that fight. And if you look at the rankings list, let me see if I can pull up the um, the rankings for that. So in the lightweight division, in the 135 pound, in the WBC rankings, Shakur Stevenson has been having one hell of a time trying to find an opponent. And it seems like everybody's just kind of ducking the smoke. I don't know, man. I hate to be the one to say people are ducking, but it, it's starting to look like that. Let me see if I can pull this up. So if we look at the WBC rankings, where we are here. Okay. So let me see if I can zoom in on this. And I can. Oh, why did it go to a different weight class? So let's see if I can pull this up. Devin Haney, Shakur. I'm trying to show you guys what the listings look like. And it keeps moving me into different weight classes. Um, as I'm zooming in. All right, boom. So let me do a quick breakdown to let you guys know what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at the rankings in the WBC ranking system. So hold on. It got me in a 140 pound division. I'm trying to get into 135 so I can visually show you what it is Shakur Stevenson has been going through trying to get this fight. So let me pull up the screen for you folks. All right. The WBC, right? The box rec rankings. There it is. Share. And let's see if I can make this go full screen for you, or at the very least, boom. No, not that one. Add the stream. There you go. Finally. 
I'm going to learn how to move through these little keys and clicks, y'all. In the WBC ranking system, you have, of course, the undisputed lightweight champion, Devin Haney. Now, Shakur Stevenson did petition the WBC to get that mandatory crack at Devin Haney. Vasil Lomachenko is going through some domestic stuff out there in Ukraine. Apparently, the military war lines between the Ukrainian-Russia conflict are getting close to his hometown. So he's kind of dealing with that. So he has declined the offer to fight Shakur Stevenson. Right now, it's on Shakur Stevenson to find a dance partner in his WBC ranking system to fight for the belt that's going to be vacated when Devin Haney fights Regis Prograis at 140 pounds. Hmm. Let me get a sip of water there. Isak Cruz, he doesn't want to smoke. He wants to fight Tank Davis. And then you have next, Frank Martin, William Zapata, Edwin De Los Santos. William Zapata's got a fight with Mercito Gesta. Edwin De Los Santos is a good candidate too. They both have good working relationships with the PBC. So by all accounts, it looks like it might be Frank the Ghost Martin and Shakur Stevenson. I think that is such a fascinating matchup. I want to see Shakur in a very challenging fight with another technician. And Frank Martin, although he did kind of start late in the boxing game, is fun to watch. He's got a lot of pop, and I'm sure he's eager to make up for that win. Even though he won, it went to a decision, and he caught a lot of criticism for it because he fought a former Olympian. I uh, forgot what the German dude's name is, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. But anyways, what do you folks out there think about the fight between Tim Zhu and Brian Bala Mendoza? And what do you think about the matchup between Shakur Stevenson and Frank Martin? Not that that's official, but I think that's going to be what's next. Let me know what you think about those matchups, folks, in the comment section. Leave a comment. Hell, if you got any ideas for future episodes, throw those in there, too. Hit that like button. Hit follow if you haven't already done so. This is Hot Boxing Minute, the future of boxing analysis on YouTube and TikTok. Peace.